Hi folks, Mark Coleman here from the Virginia Varsity Sports Network, V2SN, and this is Varsity 360, where we look at the week's top stories in Fredericksburg area high school sports. This is our February 10th, 2014 installment. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Very proud that you found us here at Fredericksburg.com and very happy to be partnered with the good folks from the Freelance Star, more specifically the sports department, and even more specifically FLS Varsity. I'm one of the luckiest guys around. Each week I get a chance to chat with some of my good friends from the FLS Varsity team, and this week is no different. Look who I've got here with me this week. We have from the Freelance Star Sports Department, Mr. Justin Rice. Justin, good to see you. Happy Valentine's Day to you, Mark. Hey, thanks, buddy. Have you got your present for your Valentine yet? Not. Not yet. Yet. By the time this airs, hopefully. Let's hope <laughs> you do, yeah. yeah. Last minute uh, Christmas, uh, Christmas card, Valentine card uh, shopping like we've ever done that before. <laughs> Welcome, Justin. We also got uh, our a good friend, Nathan Waters. Nathan, good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. <laughs> I, won't, I won't try to embarrass you and ask you anything oh, about I'm, I'm done with my shopping. You're so. done? Look at that. <laughs> Nathan, yeah. Nathan's got a critical Valentine's Day this year as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a big one. It's a big one. First as a married man, so. You've been enjoying the, the Olympics. I've been following you on Twitter. He's oh, yeah. at Nathan Waters. Uh, ice dancing, ice dancing. something you've uh, picked yes. up on here. Yes, I'm learning about the twizzles the and twizzles. the combinations, and uh, it's fun stuff. It really is. This uh, uh, slope style snowboarding is that what they call it? That's that's pretty yes. incredible stuff. Yeah, it's uh, real. It's really fun to watch. I tell you what. Yeah, yeah, enjoying that. Well, uh, let's jump into our boys basketball, starting with our top five. Coming in at number five, we have Mountain View. They've secured the number two seed in the Conference 15 tournament. Yeah, they're going to enjoy a couple days off before Friday's semifinals uh, against a, a to-be-determined opponent. Uh, they're going to get, uh, what they, I guess, the Freedom North Stafford winner in Friday's semifinal. An exciting game last week as well, a big victory for Massaponics over Brook Point. They'll be rematching on Tuesday, actually, so they get the day after we've actually recorded this. Yeah, exactly, and exciting games. Did you see online? Uh, Mountain View's got a great video out there of Lucas Brown hitting a three-pointer at the buzzer against North Stafford on Friday. As Mountain View closed out the regular season. It, it, fans are going crazy. It was a great video. Yeah. Great moment to watch. You know, Lucas, of course, is you know is clearly one of the best players in the area, and that was, I, I think, a, a fun moment. Exciting. He's yeah. an X-factor come playoff time, too, because of his defense and because of his ability to just make offense happen, uh, whether it's a three or whether it's driving inside. They, you know, I, I know they're not the team they were last year offensively, but they could be. Um, they could be a really good team down the stretch here, so look out for them. It's always a lot of fun uh, postseason basketball to see if one player can put the team on his shoulders and just or her shoulders and just ride them uh, for as far as they can go. Especially when it's a point guard who plays defense like he does. Yeah. And when your point guard is as good as he is, anything goes really. Yeah. yeah. Well, Mountain View at number five. At number four, we have Spotsylvania. Disappointing loss to Cortland this past week, 64-59. Kyle Talley for Cortland with 30 points. Uh, Spots kind of upset there, but uh, they're still looking pretty strong. Yeah, and, and you know, these games, they're going to be able to sort of put behind them and just get into Conference 27 tournament play. They're going to be the two seed. You know, we're going to talk about Culpepper here in a minute. Uh, but Spotsy's going to be the two seed there and has a great chance to get out of Conference 27 and move on in the 3A East. Retaining their position at number three despite a, another upset loss this past week, Chancellor, a, uh, a disappointing 68-62 loss at the hands of King George, the Foxes, uh, shocking uh, Chancellor there. Anthony Howard, 27 points and 15 rebounds in that victory for King George. But there, uh, there again, Chancellor, another another strong team, uh, seemed to be positioned well for the postseason. Yeah, yeah and I, th I think that uh, you know, in terms of that conference, it might be a little bit closer than it may seem, like record-wise. I think King George. Uh, uh, you know, they're a good team. You look at what Anthony Howard did, 27 points, 15 rebounds. Uh, Chancellor's probably still a little young. Like I, like I said last week, I was kind of amazed at how good they started out this right. year, losing all the talent they had last year. Uh, it could be an interesting tournament uh, just just based off of, I think, how close some of these teams are. Yeah, and I think King George, that, that's a win for King George if they can say, hey, look oh, out no for doubt. us too. Yeah. No doubt, yeah. That's uh, – that might be a statement, uh, a statement victory there. Not that you, not that you get quality wins to, to earn yourself a, a bid into a tournament, but that certainly provides the confidence for some kids to, to continue on in the next. And we're also talking about Cortland. You know, they 30 points from Kyle Talley against Spotsy. I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of talent, a lot of good teams in that in that conference. And um, you know, it's uh, it, it's going to be a good conference tournament. I, I can I can kind of tell that's going to happen there. Yeah, I think getting down to the top two teams in Conference 22 is going to be really tight. You know, King George, Cortland, Chancellor, you know, those guys, uh, 
Only two teams go, so it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a real tight race. I think yeah. good, good conference tournament there. Maybe one of the better conference tournaments, top yeah. to bottom in the area. I think so. Yeah. In terms of competition. Yeah, absolutely. Parity, I guess. Yeah. Say. Yeah. Well, at number two, we have Culpepper. You talk about a team that uh, is on a roll. Two victories uh, this past week and scoring over the century mark in both games. Uh, 103 to 56 against Spotsy and 101 46 over Liberty. That, those are some big time numbers. <laughs> James Thompson, guys at Culpepper, these guys score. They score every year. They, they put up points and points. And, uh, you know, 103 is a big number in high school basketball. That's a no doubt. big number. And um, so, you know, good for Culpepper. They're the, going to be the conference 27 1 seed. And I, I don't see, you know, with such a convincing win over Spotsylvania, I don't, I don't see how people challenge that, uh, especially and then through the tournament. I, you know, if Culpepper doesn't end up the one coming out of Conference 27, I'm completely shocked. Spotsy's no slouch, too. I mean, we talked yeah. about them last week. I think they had won seven or eight in a row going into this game. And 103-56, that's a, like you said, that's a huge number to put up, especially against a team that, um, you know, by, by all signs was really good. Seven players in double-digit scoring for uh, Culpepper in that game. Henry Butler led the way with 19 points. I think that they had an eighth kid who had nine points, so they almost <laughs> had eight players in double digits. I can't remember the last basketball game, NBA, college, or high school, where I saw seven guys in double figures. Yeah. That's, that's pretty amazing. That's, that's, that's not a common stat. Well, yeah. and again, in a high school game, eight-minute quarters, right, 103 exactly. points. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a math guy like you, Mark, but the, <laughs> the points per minute when you're talking about eight-minute quarters and you're getting 103 points, that's a big, big number. It's a bit, I'm going to agree with you. That, that is a big number. Big number. That is a big number. Well, at number one, once again, for the boys' basketball top five, Varsity 360, we have Colonial Forge, uh, a big victory over Riverbend this week. They just keep rolling. They've got a big game coming up on Tuesday as well. Yeah, one of the shames, the, the limitations of our format here, they're playing. They're going to be playing Hilton on Tuesday, and that, that game, the winner there, there's your one seed in the Conference 4 tournament. And I think... Any predictions? Oh, man. Um, you know, having not seen Hilton play, you know, Colonial Forge has certainly given me no reason to doubt that they're, they're a quality, quality team. And uh, certainly if they lose to Hilton, then Hilton is probably also a quality, quality team. And I'm going to thank Justin for letting me cover that game, too, because I haven't seen Forge this year, and all I've, all I've heard and read is how powerful and good they are, so I'm excited to see two really good teams match up against each other on okay. Tuesday. Good. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. Yeah. That should be a, that should be a really good game. And the fact that it's a regular season – uh, very likely that they're going to meet each other in the postseason as well in the conference tournament. Yeah. So it'll uh, be interesting to see how they feel each yeah. other out if they yeah. show everything they've got there. Yeah. Well, Colonial Forge retains the number one spot in the Varsity 360 Boys Basketball Top 5. Now let's take a look at the Girls Basketball and this is where we are going to find the Varsity 360 Athlete of the Week sponsored by Anytime Fitness and this week it is Courtney Simmons, women's basketball player for Spotsylvania. What a week Courtney had this past week. Three games, nearly 100 points uh, between the three games. Yeah, 91 points to be exact. She had 41, 34, and 16. And, of course, she's Spotsylvania's do-everything girl. She was our player of the year last year. She's certainly in the mix to be our player of the year again this year. And uh, just a great athlete and a great basketball player for sure. Just another week, right, for Courtney Simmons? Well, I think this was a little bit above average uh, in terms of her week. So she had. Uh, She's just been so impressive all year. She I, really did. Yeah. 34 points, 18 rebounds in a 62 37 victory over Cortland. Uh, 41 points and 11 rebounds, also seven steals in a big victory over Chancellor, 67 62. 16 points, 17 rebounds against Culpepper on Saturday. So three wins this past week, and that actually allows Spotsylvania to break our varsity 360 top five. Taking over at the number five spot, that uh, uh, swinging door, rotating chair of, uh, of <laughs> girls basketball teams. But uh, Spotsy now at, uh, I guess, 11-5 and five on the season and uh, really coming on strong. Yeah, they're going to be the, the number one seed in Conference 27. And, again, they've got the best player in the conference. And, you know, if I'm starting a team, if I have nothing else, I want the single best player. And that's what Spotsy has. Hard to argue with that, too. Yeah. Well, at number four, we have Caroline. Caroline now at 12-4. and four. They had a disappointing 61-59 loss to JM this past week. Uh, a close game, good game for Caroline to be involved in. Uh, is it Brianne Stevenson from JM with a big game? 29 points, 14 rebounds. Hope Tolliver uh, for, Car for Caroline had 18 points, 19 rebounds, and 9 blocks, nearly getting the triple-double there uh, in the loss. I'm just wondering if Caroline is – I know – a couple weeks ago they were having some depth issues 
I think they ended a game with only three players on the court in overtime one time, one, one of those games. So I'm wondering if their depth is kind of if, – if they're still kind of dealing with that and trying to figure out what they're doing with some of the their bench players, uh, you know, losing to JM. JM is coming on. They've won three in a row, but uh, that was a tough loss for them. Yeah, and I think importantly with Caroline, uh, Conference 20, which is Caroline and, of course, a host of Richmond schools, they use a different uh, standings format than the other conferences in the area use. Every game for Caroline counts – for the conference play. They, they have a modified sort of PowerPoints formula. So every game, every win, every loss counts for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but at 12-4, and four, they're still looking at the two seed right now for Conference 20. Um, but all these games, you know, whereas for James Monroe, they're not really helped by upsetting Caroline. Caroline hurt, is hurt a little bit by losing to James Monroe. Not helped in terms of the standings, but that certainly has got to be a morale boost to, to have that kind of a victory there. To James, for James Monroe. And uh, the James Monroe, I think the key player for JM, uh, a, a name you'll recognize, Monica Ditt. Is there? Uh, she's big. She's built just like her brother David Ditt was the kicker for James Monroe. Yep, yep. She's long and tall and lean, just like David. And she can she can rebound a little bit and score on the inside. They like field goals. That's. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. I knew there was a joke in there somewhere. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice there, Mr. Waters. I have to tweet that one a little bit later. Uh, well, uh, Caroline at number four in the varsity 360 top five. At number three, we have Chancellor. Uh, Chancellor is now up to 16 and four. Uh, following a 65-40 victory over King George this past week. Uh, Sydney Jackson, another big game, 19 points. Uh, this is a team that just keeps on rolling. And we keep talking about one seeds. There's your conference 22 one go. seed in the bag. Ch- Chance will be one. And, um, and you certainly like how they've handled the conference 22 uh, competition. And, again, there's, I don't think there's any reason to believe they won't be the one seed after the conference 22 tournament heading into the 4A North. You sound awfully emphatic about that. You like this team? Feel pretty good about it. You know, yeah. I, I respect results, and you, you can't really argue with what Chancellor's done uh, with, with wins and losses this year, especially against Conference 22. Sure. Yeah, no doubt. Well, another team that's put together some uh, impressive results, Colonial Beach. Uh, they are now up to 16-1 and following a victory over Rappahannock. Sydney Carey with 24 points in the 50-40 uh, to 40 victory. Um, uh, that's a fun, fun, style of all, fun style of team play. To observe there, and I look forward to seeing these. Like Nathan, look forward to see Colonial Forge. I look forward to see uh, my my buddy Keith Dickerson out at Colonial Beach, and uh, and the Drifters Conference Forty Three play coming up. And uh, Colonial Beach got to be in good shape for Conference Forty Three. Number one seed, not Perhaps. wrapped up, but sounds pretty good. Okay. Well, uh, how about uh, our number one seed, the number one uh, spot in a Varsity Three Hundred and Sixty Girls Top Five? We have Colonial Forge. Uh, following a big 30-point victory, 64-34 over Riverbend. Uh, Forge now up to 15-3. and three. Uh, Taft said that this was the best girls basketball team that the area has ever produced. You guys have any arguments with that? No, I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's get into the postseason and see what happens. Um, I, think, I think their competition for that title is probably the Colonial Forge team last year that you know, made the state tournament. You know, I think that's the mark that Colonial Forge is striving to sort of top. Okay. They have two games left. Um, Stafford's the two seed. Uh, I'd be remiss not to say something about Stafford. They, I think they won seven games last year. They're up to 12 wins this year. They're in the, the second seed spot. They're kind of competing. They both have two games left. And there's no doubt Forbes will be the number one seed in that, in that conference tournament, but um, that's impressive that Stafford's right there behind them there for that number two spot. Yeah, Kendall Parker, Grace Epps, good one-two combination yeah. for Stafford. Yeah. yeah. And it's always nice and fun to hear those stories. You know, They're not going to make the headlines, but – uh, teams and programs that are able to make those kinds of differences, you know, that that's meaningful. Those are the kinds of stories that these kids are going to be talking about in you know 15, 20 years. Yeah. So Certainly. congratulations to them. Well, that's a look at the girls' side of the Varsity 360 Top Five. Well, it looks like we've got some breaking news in the high school football scene. Uh, a couple of potential coaches, new hires, uh, starting in Caroline. Yeah, Caroline reaches sort of across the Rappahannock River and goes and grabs uh, Antron Yates from Washington and Lee. Um, Antron has been, a, he's a WNL guy and he's been there the last two years. Uh, he's gone to the playoffs both years. You know, last year, or excuse me, his first year they were one and done. This year they managed, they got a win and a, a home game. And um, I think Yates has done a really good job with the discipline at, at WNL and sort of bringing together some disparate parts and uh, making the Eagles really, really credible. You know, they played Essex. Essex was a very strong single-A team this year, and uh, WNL played them very tough. And, uh, you know, Coach Yates is going to get his crack at, at Caroline. You know, the, the Cavaliers have sort of been a, a revolving door for coaches here lately. Um, I'm sure they would 
really like some stability and a coach to come in and, and think long term and build a program. And uh, so it looks like Coach Yates gets that crack. Well, excellent. Congratulations to Coach Yates and good luck at uh, Caroline. Uh, Brooke Point also making some news hiring a, a new coach. Yeah, not really a new coach. I think the area is quite familiar with Tommy Buzzo. He was at uh, Liberty Bealton High School for quite some time before he uh, went to the college ranks at Central Connecticut. Um, a guy, you know, every time I covered one of their games, I was always really impressed by um, the discipline and how organized they were. I mean, they would get off the bus wearing suits and ties, you know, and I think. Uh, Brooke Point's getting a guy who's uh, who's into discipline, who's into the organization, and he's got a really big tie-in to the college game. I mean, they when he was at Liberty, a lot of his guys went to the college level. He's been at the college level, and now it could be a real good coup for the area to have a guy with those college uh, connections sure. for, for Brooke Point and for a lot of different schools in Stafford and Spotsy County just to get coaches down here to look at some of these kids. Yeah, so absolutely. I think the, the, the competition for who's the best coach or most well-regarded coach in Stafford County I mean, that's just another name in that bucket that's, you know, Buzzo's got a great resume and so on, and um, he's a guy we're familiar with for a long time and sure. just does a great job. Yeah, we have class act after class act after class act in this area, not only Stafford but Spotsy County too, and this is just another guy to add to that list. And um, he's going to help us too because he was he was great with, you know, great the media. With the, great so, with the newspaper. So yeah. we're, we're excited to have him aboard too. Welcome so. back, Coach Buzzo. <laughs> So, so the opinion of the coach is uh, directly proportional to the uh, relationship that he has with the uh, absolutely the a lot of times. Yeah. It's hard to argue with. Got to be a factor. So, Got to be a factor. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, what does this mean for Brook Point in terms of a program? They've they've got some some tough uh, tough sledding ahead of them. That five A North is is a, is a tough division well, to be in. I don't think though, if you stacked up player for player, I don't think there's a high school in the area that's put out more quality no. athletes in football than Brook Point. I mean, the guys that you can rattle off that have played there, you know, um, starting with Alex Figueroa and, and Lanford Collins, I mean, those guys yeah. are, those are, those are high-quality athletes. You know, uh, Chase Barnett, of course, went to Liberty. and um, uh, E.L. Smiling. I mean, they've, they've had a ton of guys. Brian going. Hudson goes yeah. to Liberty. Yeah, I mean, just a ton of athletes. Um, that, there's no reason to think Brooke, he won't have talent to work with at Brook Point. In Stafford County, there's so many good kids at, at all those schools, and I, just, I think there's a – uh, you know, a, a, a flux of players at all these schools. Mo Hampton, the interim coach this year for Brook Point, he had a really tough job to step in there, like, you know, with very little um, very little transition, time. preparation time to try to get them going. I have no doubt that Mo Hampton will, will land on his feet somewhere. It just wasn't uh, it wasn't an enviable, posi- enviable position to be in. And I think Buzzo's – the cover's not going to be bare for them. And I think there's a decent chance you see Hampton still at Brook Point. Was a good chance, yeah. A very good defensive coach, Mo Hampton. So, um, and I think I think the school and the program, the kids certainly responded well to him. He's still very well liked. Yes, absolutely. Good, good. Well, it's always fun to see the fresh new talent coming up, and uh, we we had signing day, national signing day this past week. Uh, but it's sort of time now to turn attention to the current juniors, the rising senior class, and there's some real talent in the area. Uh, that's starting to get some looks from the next level. Yeah, it's always funny. Like, you sign a day comes, it's all the kids that you knew where they were going to go, they sign, you get it over with, and the next day I always go and hit the phone and talk to the guys for 2015 or the next year. So I had a chance to talk to Gus, uh, Gus Little at Massaponics, the linebacker, and I had a chance to talk to Gary Jennings, a quarterback for Colonial Forge. Both kids are being recruited heavily. Um, both kids, uh, you know, I think that the recruiting is going to kind of um, run the table, probably go through the summer. Um, they'll, they'll wait to get all their offers and, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, two very good players. Uh, Jennings has offers from ODU and UVA. I have no doubt that he's going to get quite a few more. Little has an offer from ODU, but he was at Wake Forest this weekend. He was at Pitt the weekend before. Um, Northwestern, Boston College, there's a lot of schools that are in the picture for him. And it's not just those two guys. I mean, we have you know Jay Scroggins at JM, Keyshawn Johnson, the receiver at Caroline. Um, uh, QB, the running back for Eastern View. Anton Jenkins, the running back for, for Cortland. We have so many good juniors this year that um, I expect to start seeing some of this college movement happen. Elijah uh, Burris. Elijah Burris, Elijah quarterback Burris, yeah. for Mountain View, yeah. Um, Forge has actually two other guys, uh, Javon Frazier, defensive lineman, Justin Brown, wide receiver. Bill Brown told me they're both Division One players, and he, he knows his stuff. So I, I think we could have another good crop of Division One talent players uh, going into 2015. No doubt. No doubt. Exciting. Hard to believe that we can talk about football already, but uh, <laughs> there we are. So. Well, I'll tell you, they're already, you know, the kids are they're meeting, their preseason workouts oh, yeah. are on. I mean, it's it's on. It's, football is 
essentially nonstop at this point. Well, and the kids that understand that this is potentially a ticket for them to, to at least get a college education, if not dreams of playing you know, professionally in the future, it, it becomes a year-round uh, undertaking yeah, for absolutely. many of them. So. I'm amazed by how savvy these players are now, too. I was talking to Jennings, who is close to a 4.0 student, little – I, I don't know his grade point average, but I know he's very bright. I got him on the phone, and I was just kind of blown away by how savvy, how ready these kids are for these challenges. And it's just really cool to see these guys. They're embracing um, this whole process. I would be freaking out at this point, but no, these guys are just like, hey, bring it on. you know. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun talking to these guys and talking about their future and kind of yeah. speculating on what they're going to do. Looking forward to it. Well, uh, big news. Looking forward to the upcoming – uh, football season and congratulations to the two new coaches in the area uh, and good luck to those programs as well as the uh, the rising seniors for this class. Well we are into mid-February and that means the uh, postseason for the winter sports are drawing close. We've got some postseason notes to come up here, right Justin? Yeah there you go. We, wrestling? Wrestling, you know, uh, wrestling uh, sort of got underway this past week uh, with Colonial Forge winning the uh, Conference 4 title. They had nine champions. They get all 14 kids get through to the uh, region tournament. Uh, Mountain View comes away. Real close matches, it turns out, with Brook yeah. Point. Mountain View has seven champions, but the team race wasn't really decided until about midway through the uh, the final round. Uh, Mountain View got into their, their middleweights with Jared Swan and Russell Ramsey and Benjamin Bolin, and uh, those kids went win, 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 win. Um, uh, J.E., and uh, they sort of pulled away. Pretty close race. I think a real good showing by Brook Point. Brook Point should be come away real pleased. Mountain View has seven champions. They get four others that are going to move on. And then Conference 22, you know, I'll eat some crow. I, I really like Eastern View there. I believe I wrote in last two, uh, last Wednesday's paper, I liked Eastern View, but in a close race with Falkir, uh-uh. Falkir Here. comes away with that title. Yeah. Cyclone's not that still close good. either. You know, n not really. I think I think Falkir certainly looks like the team. And, you know, of course, this isn't like Eastern View wrestled Falkir and now gets to avoid Falkir. Right. You know, if Eastern View, I know that all season they've sort of thought about a team state title, you still got to go through Falkir. Um, still, the Cyclones get five champions. They move on to move on into the uh, into the 4A East or 4A North tournament. All those tournaments this upcoming weekend on Saturday, uh, Mountain View is going to, or excuse me, North Stafford is going to host the 5A North on uh, Friday and Saturday. Colonial Forge hosts the 6A South on Friday and Saturday, and Eastern View hosts the 4A North on uh, Friday and Saturday as well. Okay. So several teams in the area still have uh, state titles, team titles, uh, hopes, uh, and aspirations, but a, a plethora of area wrestlers that are still alive. Yeah, sure enough. And if I was putting those teams in order of who I like to win a state title, Mountain View 1, Colonial Forge 2, Eastern View 3. Brook Point still in the picture there, or you feel like they probably not got enough. Kids? I don't think I don't think they got enough depth through. Yeah. Um, I think they're certainly going to have kids that get through and do well. Shane Ice is a kid I like from their team real uh, um, a lot. He he won a real nice, maybe one of the better finals matches on Saturday over at uh, Massaponics in in uh, Conference 15. And um, their 106 pounder Joseph Knight, another kid that uh, looked really impressive at 106, uh, won a, a conference title. I like him moving on. Okay, excellent. Uh, Nathan, how about swimming? Swimming. Uh, we've got some impressive performances so far in championship season. I, I've been I, I've been impressed by the teams and what they've done because uh, what I've heard from pretty much everybody is that the uncertainty with the new alignment, no one really knew what to expect okay. in terms of who was good, which swimmers were going to do what. I mean, you know, Mountain View's coach um, on, on Friday told me she was just using heat times to kind of – gauge you know who's good and who's not and that's you know that's hard to do to go into a meet so um i covered 5a north region on friday mountain view girls finished third i think that was the first time that they've placed at a region meet um they were really excited north stafford was fifth despite breaking five school or four school records they finished fifth in the wow. region um wow. but they were you know they were both very happy with their performances um we got 6a south region coming up on saturday in richmond um, Stafford girls are coming off of a championship in Conference Four, so look look to them to look for them to do some some stuff there in that in that tournament. Um, we've got uh, 4A North, um, King George swept Conference 22, um, so look for them to do some things there. And then James Monroe, who um, you know Brad Allison, Nolan Butler, they have a lot of really talented swimmers. The 3A East tournament's coming up, so look for them as well. Um, we should have some really good results uh, this weekend in swimming. 
so exciting times in the area for swimming so that's that's great absolutely that's yeah. great thanks nathan and uh how about track track you, you're in conference meet time this week uh friday was of course conference 15 and then you have mountain views girls uh michelle morton the senior sprinter she won the 300 the 55 and the 500 for mountain view you know that's a lot of points from uh, one girl, yep. and uh, then Brook Point Bo boys win a conference title. Junior uh, Alec Brodeur, uh he won the 55 and the 300. You know, another sprinter type, and you know, tracks one of those things when it comes to team standings. If you get one kid through that can score a lot of points in a couple different events, you can do very well uh, as a team. And uh, I think that's what you saw from those two teams. And then Conference Four actually wrapped up today, Monday. Uh, Forest Park swept both of those. Still Colonial Forge and get some girls through Stafford, they get some kids through, and uh, we'll be moving on to the, the 6A South meet this upcoming weekend. Great, great. Well, exciting times in track as well. Uh, how about any news from the gymnastics? The gymnastics as well. It's, we're, we're flooded with conference and region tournaments. Um, the, Wonderful time of the year. <laughs> yeah. The local teams did well in their in their respective conference tournaments. Stafford wins, of course, their conference that involved you know Stafford and, of course, uh, Colonial Forge as well, and Stafford ran away with the team title. Colonial Forge's Lexi Holbrook is your all-around champion. And then Mountain View wins their conference, Conference 12, uh, with Emily Brutsky, freshman, leading the way, winning the all-around title. These guys both move on to region meets on Saturday. Um, I think Mountain View has a, a real tough road there. They got uh, Deep Run is a, is a quality team, and uh, Great Bridges Courtney Adams is one of the best gymnasts in the whole state. You know, if you're going down to watch the uh, the 5A South gymnastics, you're going to see Courtney Adams from Great Bridge, fabulous gymnast, and uh, you know she. It would be an upset if she's not your all-around champion. Stafford goes, and they go to the 6A South uh, region meet, and the um, the Virginia Beach schools are very strong. They always are. And But I think if you look at what they did in their conference tournaments, Stafford's maybe in striking distance. They've got to have a good day and maybe need someone else to not have their best day, and maybe Stafford talks about moving on to the state tournament as a team. Excellent. You know, Brutsky, that's a name that's come up. She's won several all-around uh, meets uh, this season, and she's just a freshman. That's uh, that's a pretty exciting time. Yeah, I don't I don't like to proclaim too any, anything too early, but I wager when you see our gymnastics all-area team, you'll probably see Emily Brutsky on it. I, I'm going to guess that she's probably going to be on it four times in her <laughs> career. That would be my guess. Yeah, you know, you, you know, you don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but certainly I think not. I think certainly if we're talking about this winner, I think Emily Brutsky is probably a safe choice for freelance star all area. There you go. I wanted to mention one more thing about sure. swimming. I forgot to mention Fredericksburg Christian winning the Delaney and boys swimming the Delaney conference. It's the first time that they've won it. Uh, I think Seton has won it 17 straight years. So for them to win that championship, uh, kudos for, to them for, yeah. for pulling that off. There you go. Congratulations to FTC. And, and with some good That's times. Wonderful. I'm doing top times today. Yeah. And the Fredericksburg Christian kids are coming in and, and putting up times that are getting into our top six. We keep our, you know, we track times from the area and they're, right. and they're getting in there. So they're putting up legit times and uh, turning in nice results. Wonderful. Well, as always, it's been another exciting week of uh, area high school sports. Lots of good stories. Lots of great uh, times and events going around. Happy Valentine's Day, Mark. Hey, thanks, buddy. You too. Happy Valentine's Day to Elise, more I get importantly. No, I get no love. <laughs> no. Uh, you're all right, man. Uh, we certainly enjoy being here, folks. I appreciate Nathan and, and Justin joining me here this week. Uh, always fun to chat with the good folks from uh, FLS Varsity and the wonderful crew from FLSVarsity.com. You can follow them on Twitter, at FLS Varsity, to keep up with all of the latest in high school sports scene. Certainly hope that you check in with us here at Fredericksburg.com to pick up with Varsity 360 each and every week. And uh, certainly appreciate you uh, watching in this week. For the Virginia Varsity Sports Network, I'm Mark Coleman. Thanks for watching, everyone.